Splendid day to you out there, and welcome once again to Women on the Watch, powered by the Shepherd's Act. At Women on the Watch, our aim is to expose time-tested principles for practical and modern-day application to personal and relationship development issues. My name is Wonola Adetayo, the Shaper. In the month of June, Father's Day is usually celebrated all over the world. And to that effect, we have devoted the June series of Women on the Watch to presenting fatherhood portraits. The purpose is to provide scripture-based lessons to help fathers develop and become better for their children, for families, for societies, and the world at large. Last week, we examined the subject of neglectful fatherhood using Eli the dad as our case study. We looked at the characteristics of neglectful fathers through the portrait of neglectful fatherhood. We covered four different types of neglect. We looked at the evil consequences of neglectful fatherhood. And then we ended with the remedies for neglectful fatherhood. Today's episode is titled Failed Fatherhood. And our case study shall be Lot, the dad. We'll take our Bible passage from Genesis chapter 19, verses 36 to 38. Genesis 19, 36 to 38. I'm reading from the New International Version. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son. She named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben Amni. He is the father of Ammonites of today. Let us pray. God the Father, we thank you for the privilege to examine the subject that is dear to your heart. We thank you, our Father, for all who are watching and listening. And we pray that you will minister to every heart. We pray that through this series, fathers will become better, stronger, and a better reflection for you. They will become more responsible as parents, supported by their wives. We pray, oh God, that all that we will learn today will never, ever stand against us in judgment, but rather they will justify us. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to look at the story of Lot the dad as portrayed in Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 all the way to 38. Genesis 19, verses 1 all the way to 38. Lot was Abraham's nephew, and he was the son of Haran and grandson of Terah. Lot left his native town with Abraham, his uncle, when God called Abraham out of his kindred. As God prospered their journey, Lot and Abraham's servants began to have disputes amongst them because they had become prosperous. Abraham did not want any strife or schism within his ranks. And so as an uncle, he humbly asked Lot to make a choice where to relocate so they could separate themselves. Lot chose the beautiful and luscious fields of Sodom. There, Lot lived with his wife and daughters. Unfortunately, Sodom was a morally bankrupt city and God had decided to deal decisively with this nation because of their sin. However, Abraham was the beloved of God and so God revealed to Abraham what was going to happen to Sodom. 
the destruction that he was going to bring on the depraved city of Sodom. Abraham proceeded to intercede on behalf of his nephew, Lot, and his family. Through the mercy of God, an angel was sent to rescue Lot, his wife, and his two daughters that chose to follow him. Even whilst they hesitated, the angel literally carried them out of the borders of Sodom with a clear instruction to run for their lives and never look back. The first sad incident for this family is that Lot's wife disobeyed godly instruction. She looked back and instantly she became a pillar of salt. Lot was now left alone with his two daughters. Because of fear, Lot moved himself and his daughter from the city of Zoar where the angel had dropped them. So he chose to live in a cave in the hills, which was now far away from civilization. We don't know whatever might have caused it, but the two daughters felt that it was their duty to preserve humanity. And since there was no other man around, they made up their mind that they were going to preserve the seed of their father. The two daughters, obviously aware of their father's drinking problem, they came up with a plan to get their father soaking drunk and then have sexual relations with him. They executed this plan on two consecutive nights, starting with the first daughter and then the second daughter. It is amazing that Lot slept through the two incidents, completely saturated with wine and was unaware of what had happened. Although Lot was passive in this exercise, yet as a father, he is culpable. Sad to note that the plan worked. So both the daughters of Lot were impregnated by their father. The two sons that were born by the sisters ended up becoming arch enemies of the Israelites. They are known as the Moabites and the Ammonites. Our prayer for every father that is out there that might have some personal struggles with one habit or the other. We pray that God will fight for you. We pray that God will deliver you completely in the mighty name of Jesus. What an appalling end to the efforts of Abraham in interceding for Lot, what an appalling end to the efforts of God who sent an angel to save this family from destruction. What a family legacy. This story, like never before, reminds us that fathers, unless they deal decisively with their innate weaknesses and struggles, it can turn around and bite the men and bite their families as it did in the case of Lot's family. We pray once again that God will strengthen all fathers for the awesome responsibility of fatherhood in the name of Jesus. In today's episode of Failed Fatherhood, we will look at one, what did Lot do wrong? Second, we will ask the question, is there a way in which fathers can avoid the traps of failed fatherhood? But before we do this, I'd like us to take a quick short break. Please stay tuned. We'll be back with you shortly. Hello, expectant mothers. Do you know that shaping your child's destiny begins long before birth? The womb is a place where children can be blessed and equally a place where children can be maimed. The Pregnancy Watch by Wanuola Adetayo is a uniquely conceived tool designed to support you in active participation in this process. Presented in an easy-to-read devotional format, this best-selling book combines the physical and spiritual insights backed by medical research to equip and empower you to fulfill the awesome responsibility of birthing new life. Dr. Yinka Moshoro, a consultant pediatrician, cardiologist and public health physician, has this to say. 
The Pregnancy Watch is a well-crafted and skillfully blended piece on the biological and spiritual development of a child in the mother's womb. It is for this reason that this book is highly recommended for every woman trusting God for a child and those who are already pregnant. Visit www.theshapersarc.org slash books or call 0812-402-0538 to place an order. The Portrait of a Failed Father. Number one, look at Lot. Lot was selfish. In Genesis 13, 8 to 9, when Abraham, his uncle, who brought him on a journey, said to Lot, make a choice. Lot said in his heart, as he looked, this is the best place. Rather than saying to his uncle, you are my uncle, you deserve the best. Lot decided, I will keep the best. So in terms of a character failure, Lot had the problem of selfishness. He was self-centered. Second, Lot made carnal choices that put his family at risk. Because he looked at the place, it was beautiful. So since it was beautiful to the eyes, just like Eve, Eve looked at the apple. The apple seemed beautiful. And she decided against the instruction of God, to eat that apple. Lord, Lot made a carnal choice that put his family at risk because in Genesis chapter 13 verse 12, he was attacked in Sodom and it was still his uncle Abraham that came to rescue him. Genesis chapter 14 verses 4 and 12. So he made a carnal choice that put his family at risk. The third failure that we notice in Lot is that despite his uncle's rescue, which was a pointer to wrong location, Lot still returned back to the sinful city. So Lot was greedy. He wanted good things. He couldn't separate, separate himself from good things even when it contained sin around it. Genesis chapter 14, verse 16. Despite the rescue, Lot returned back to the sinful city of Sodom. What else did Lot do wrong? Lot was so committed to protecting his own guests from sodomy that he offered his two virgin daughters. You see, it was more important for him to look after others that he was willing to give his own daughter for the people who wanted to commit sodomy. What else and where else did Lot fail? Lot was not taken seriously by his sons-in-law in Genesis nineteen fourteen, They didn't take him seriously, which means they have probably noticed the failed character. And so sometimes when we are like that, the children know when to ignore and, and know when not to take the, the, the man seriously. Now, the beauty of it is that in spite of all of Lord's character failures of selfishness, of greed, of even poor choices. The Bible in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, described Lot as righteous. Lot did not allow his daughters to be exposed to the sin of the city. So even though he dwelt in a sinful city, somehow he managed to protect his daughters from the sinful influence of his city and from the moral depravity that was happening in that society. And I suspect that that is why God's mercy chose to save Lot and his daughters from violent death in Sodom. Is there a way that fathers can avoid the trap of failed fatherhood? We want to take a look at some tips that fathers can adopt to avoid the trap of failed fatherhood. Number one, when a father seeks God's will in decision making and family choices, there's a very low chance of falling into error. We notice that Lot wasn't seeking the will of God as he made 
family choices. He wasn't seeking the will of God. The example that Jesus set for us, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when that choice was difficult, Jesus said, not my will, Lord, but your will. Peter also set us an example. He fished all night as a, as a wise fisherman. He knew it was nighttime. And in the morning, Jesus said, throw your net, cast your net. He said, nevertheless, at your word. So, we must learn that as fathers, as parents, seek God's will in decision making. And this example is shown to us by Joseph the carpenter. He followed strictly the directive when God sent an angel to him, take your wife, take your child away and go to Egypt. And there you will be protected for some time until the king dies. Read the story in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. So to avoid the trap of failed fatherhood, please, please, and please seek the will of God in family decision making. The second way to avoid the trap of failed fatherhood is to honor leaders. Exodus 20, 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which God giveth thee. Lot did not honor his uncle. Therefore he chose what was better, which meant uncle, take what is not good. <laughs> Lot did not follow Abraham's way. That's why he fell into drinking. How come a, a, a nephew of Abraham will be made completely drunk, so saturated drunk that he did not know two consecutive days of having carnal affairs with the daughters. Therefore, to avoid falling into the trap of fatherhood, I mean, uh, of failed fatherhood, fathers must learn the way by honoring. Lead the way. When the children see you, you honor your father, they will honor you as well. They will listen to you as well. The third way of avoiding the trap of failed fatherhood is to challenge the status quo. Don't get comfortable with discomfort. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17a, 2 Corinthians 6, 17a, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Lot should have left Sodom in the best interest of his family. He should have learned to trust God rather than clinging to familiar past. In fact, it was the clinging to the familiar past that made Lot's wife to become a pillar of salt. So the continued stay led to avoidable attacks on the family, and it led to the eventual loss of the daughters and the sons-in-law who stayed behind in Sodom. In fact, his wife also became a pillar of salt. And see, the daughters committed incestuous crimes. We must learn as fathers, change the status quo. Don't get comfortable with discomfort. Another way of avoiding the trap of failed fatherhood is to deal decisively with our personal weaknesses. Matthew 5.30, Matthew 5.30. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is far better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. Lot should have dealt decisively with his drinking problem. If he had done that, there's no way his daughters could have manipulated him. There are fathers who smoke. There are fathers who commit sinful crimes. There are fathers who abuse their wives in the presence of the children. And they hope that this secret will be safe. No, they are not safe. They are not hidden. Soon enough, the child will take advantage or simply adopt the same behavior. I pray that fathers will do the needful when they have personal struggles to work on them. Number five, how can you avoid failed fatherhood, the trap of failed fatherhood? Develop a thriving family altar. Bible records in Genesis 18, 19 to 21, speaking concerning Abraham, says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken. At the family altar, 
relationships are formed with Christ. Problems are presented to Christ and divine solutions are received. This would have prevented Lot's daughters from making the wrong choices that they made if they were constantly communing with God as a family. As we bring today's episode to a close, we remember that we have looked at the portrait of failed fatherhood. We have seen where Lot missed it. And therefore, we have looked at ways that we can avoid the trap of failed fatherhood. It is important to note that the story of Lot did not end unrecoverably. Why? Because God, in his infinite mercy, always finds a way to right our wrongs. It is noteworthy that Ruth, an offspring of Moab, eventually would travel with her mother-in-law to Bethlehem, Judah, where she married Boaz and became the grandmother of Jesse, the father of King David in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 5. I pray for you and I pray for me. Just as Jesus will later be called the root of David in Revelation 22, 16, that God will have mercy on all fathers and begin to right their wrong in the name of Jesus. It means there is hope for all fathers. No matter how far you are falling, no matter how lost you think the situation is, God's mercy will show up for you today. We pray for every father that is struggling at one addiction or the other, struggling with one personal frailty or the other, that God will turn your story to glory. God will turn your shame to fame in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so very much for joining us in this series of fatherhood. We continue the series next week. I beg of you, don't miss it at all, because then we'll be looking at devoted fathers. I look forward to seeing you there. Till I come your way again next week, this is one of the shaper. Shalom. Mm -hmm.